Hi there, this is David, and welcome to the Top 10 Most Unique RPG Overworld Modes of Travel. Here, we're going to be looking back on and celebrating world maps of yore, and the various ways the developers would allow the player to move about that world. I'm not going to be discussing ships and airships, or even airship knockoffs here. Those have been in the genre since day one. We're going to be digging a little bit deeper, and trying to find the more esoteric forms of travel. So, let's get started. Number 10. Limited Flight This mode of transit is always interesting to me. It allowed for some limited freedom, escape from random battles, and access to hidden areas still relatively early in the game. Essentially, it gives you the ability to hover over the land while still being blocked by some obstacles such as mountains. The first RPG that I played that featured it was Final Fantasy Legend 3, where you got the ever-useful float spell to explore the entire world and see how it changes over time. Dragon Quest V, VI, and VII all did this mode of transit too, with magic carpets and flying beds. Final Fantasy IV's Black Chocobos gave you this limited flight as well, and let's not forget the hovercraft, which allowed you to cross the shoals. The dragon in Final Fantasy V gave you some freedom too, at least until you left him in the dust after traveling to Karnak. Number 9. Modern Modes of Transit Normally, I don't like seeing anything modern in my games. I generally prefer medieval fantasy, but that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate some good, well-implemented modern transit. Pokemon and Earthbound introduced the bicycle into the genre, and while it's limited in scope in both games, it's still fun to toy around with. Final Fantasy VIII is famous for its modern setting, and taking cars and trains from one area to the next was definitely a vast departure for the series. In Crossbell, cars ruled the day, and while the special support section was relegated to buses and trails to zero, they got their very own squad car in the sequel. Speaking of the Trails series, in Cold Steel 2 and 3, you have access to Angelica's motorcycle, and while the controls aren't the best, it is still a great way to cross vast distances. Number 8. Flying Towns What's better than just some town that you go to and explore once? A town that you can take with you as you fly across the world map, like in Breath of Fire 2. And speaking of that game, we'll be seeing it more later on, because it has some great modes of travel. Bringing up Final Fantasy VIII again, wasn't it nice when the entire school was yours to control and bring wherever you wanted to? And while not exactly towns, I think it is nice when airships have some supplies inside of them as well. Final Fantasy Legend 3 and Final Fantasy VI were the first games that I can recall that did this, allowing you to buy, sell, and heal while on board. Trails of Cold Steel 2 did this as well to the nth degree, by allowing you to recruit all the Thor's University students and bring them aboard the Courageous. Kind of like outfitting your headquarters in Sukoden. And speaking of that, the much maligned fourth game in the series ship doubled as the party's home base. Number 7. Pets. I absolutely adore Guardian's Crusade, and a special touch is that your partner, the baby, whom you've been accompanying to God's Tower, later on gains the ability to fly. So not only is he your trusted party member, but he's your method of overworld travel too. This is ingenious, and it's seen in Tales of Symphonia as well, but to a lesser extent. Lloyd's dog, Noish, can be ridden around on the overworld, which is a cool novelty. Too bad he's not a real party member though. And who could forget the adorable Flammy from Secret of Mana? I like how you had to wait for him to grow up before you could ride him around the world. And speaking of dragons, there's your pet Nal in Lunar Silver Star Story, who also grows up to be a grand white dragon. Even the much maligned Beyond the Beyond gets in on the action, because once you change classes, Steiner becomes a full-fledged dragon who you can ride around and explore the world on. Number 6. Time and World Travel Traveling to different worlds was featured prominently in the Final Fantasy Legends series for the Game Boy. The first one had you climbing a tower to defeat God and explore four different worlds. The second gave you 11 varied worlds to travel to through the Celestial World. And returning back to the third, not only were you able to warp to the past, present, and future, but you were also able to travel interdimensionally to the Pure Land as well. The Fantasy Star series is wonderful in this regard allowing you to explore the many planets of the Algo star system. And who can forget about Chrono Trigger? Traversing the world and changing history by traveling to different eras just blew my mind. I kind of feel like I should mention something about Star Ocean here too, but lately, that series is nothing but a letdown. 
Number five, underwater travel. Can someone out there tell me why RPGs don't allow you to explore the ocean floor that often? It seems like an obvious inclusion if the designers wanted to look at another world map. Lufia 2 is fantastic in this regard, though. The trusty Exerion could sail, fly, and submerge to the ocean floor, allowing you to access many different hidden places. And I'm sure that you're sick of me singing its praises by now, but Final Fantasy Legend 3 gave you the dive magic, which allowed you to go beneath the waves to loot shipwrecks, explore dungeons, and even visit submerged towns. Moving on to two other legendary franchises, Dragon Quest VI, along with Final Fantasy V, are the only games in their respective series to truly let you explore underwater. I mean, there were some small bits in the other games, but nothing as expansive as we saw with these two. Now, instead of looking at overarching themes in travel, let's look at how some series as well as specific games handle unique travel options. Number 4. Chocobos of the Final Fantasy series First appearing in Final Fantasy II for the NES, these cute little birds have been a series staple ever since. I first encountered them when I was 9, playing Final Fantasy IV on Christmas morning, and I spent way too much time wandering the overworld around Baron, crossing the rivers, and trying to see if there was anything behind that waterfall. I rarely use them in 6, but the evolution system in 7 made up for that in spades. I had fun breeding them at the Chocobo Ranch, first making river and mountain chocobos, and eventually getting the ultimate gold chocobo, who has free reign over the entire world map. This is important because the various chocobos not only gave you access to secret areas, but also allowed you to travel to places that you just couldn't otherwise access with an airship. Then there's the Chocograph minigame in 9. I know many people didn't care for it, but personally, I loved it. Number 3. Unique Travel in the Wild Arms series A common thread throughout the series is golems being central to the plot and allowing the player to ride on them to cross shallows and break down barriers in the first and fifth games. Wild Arms 5 also had the mono wheel, which is probably one of the most unique things that I've ever seen in a JRPG, although the contraption does rear its head again in that dumpster fire Grandia Extreme. The third game had two novel forms of transportation. First, horseback riding, where you could fight on horseback, ride them across the overworld, and jump crevices. And a little bit later, you'd receive the Sand Cruiser, essentially the ship of the game, which you could also upgrade and fight battles with too. Number two, inventions in the magical land of Waz. How many times do I have to proclaim my love for Waz before more people play this gem? One of your main party members, Leona, is an inventor, and as such, she can create all sorts of different modes of overworld travel, from tanks and golems to three different kinds of ocean conveyance, and finally two different forms of air travel. Like Wild Arms 3, you'll still deal with random encounters while you're in your vehicles, but each of them comes equipped with its own unique attack that pretty much slaughters anything that moves. Half the fun is also seeing the battle sprites that the designers came up with for each invention too. For a game this unique, it's really a shame that it never left Japan. And number one, Breath of Fire 2. This fabulous game did everything right. I'll never understand why Capcom went from amazing overworld travel to pretty much abandoning it in subsequent games. Just about everyone has some sort of overworld ability. Ran can curl up into a ball and roll around the map avoiding encounters until your inevitable crash. Sten can cross narrow gaps with his go-go gadget arms. Spar can navigate forests. And useless Gene can transform into a giant frog to hop across the world and swim in lakes and rivers. Later on, Nina gets the ability to call the Great Bird, and instead of just getting a boat to sail on, you rescue a whale to ride the ocean waves with. There's nothing generic here, and that's why it's number one. Well, that's it for the top 10 most unique forms of overworld travel. What are your favorites? Did I miss any? Let me know in the comments, and if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.